We're going to get started by creating a brand new Android Studio project. And then the goal for this segment is to set up the scaffolding for the main layout or main UI for our memory game. Here's what the final user interface for our app will look like. At the top, we have an action bar, which comes in by default in every Android app, and it describes how the user can navigate through your app. The bulk of the screen will be taken up by something called a recycler view, and that's how we're going to power this grid of memory cards that make up our memory game. At the bottom, we have two labels or two text views that describe the current state of the game. And so at the end of this part, here's what our UI will look like. At the top, we have the default action bar. At the bottom, we have a horizontal linear layout with two text views with dummy data, and the rest of the screen will be filled up with an empty recycler view. All right, let's open up Android Studio, and you can see here that I'm running version 4.1. Any recent version of Android Studio should do. So I'm going to tap the option for creating a new project. And let's go ahead and pick the empty activity template. Tap on Next. And we're going to call this project My Memory because it's a customizable memory game. The package name has to be a unique identifier for your app, and it, it will dictate the directory structure for your project. Typically, I'll take my domain name, rkpana.com, or my email address and flip it backward. Pick a location for where you want to save it. We're going to pick the language of Kotlin, which is the more modern and recommended way of building Android apps going forward. The minimum SDK, I'm going to pick API level 21, which is Android 5.0 otherwise known as Lollipop. And you can see here, Android Studio is telling us that if we pick API 21, that means our app will run on 94% of devices. So that means around 6% of Android devices are running a version of Android, which is more than five years old, and they won't be able to download our app. But there's a lot of pain associated with actually backporting your app and making sure it runs on all these super old Android OS. So I would recommend that you stick with API 21. Let's tap on finish. And then Android Studio, initially, when it creates your project, it will actually try building it based on the scaffolding that you picked. So we have empty activity, which means that we just have a kind of a blank activity here, which, is that, which will say, hello world. And the very first thing I like to do whenever I create a brand new project is simply to run it. And running it will give me the confidence that I haven't screwed anything up in the setup. I have Android Studio set up properly. I have an emulator set up properly. And I'm actually able to compile and run my app. I have a bunch of emulators already set up here. If you don't have any emulators, click on AVD Manager, it's Android Virtual Device Manager, and that will guide you through the process of creating a new emulator that you can install the app on. I'm gonna go with this Pixel 2 API 29 emulator. And without making any code changes, I'm simply going to hit this green triangle in order to run the app and boot up the emulator in that process. Okay, awesome, so you can see down here at the bottom how it says the operation succeeded, and just like we want, we're able to see this default empty application, which says, hello world. So let me quickly talk through what we get in the starter project here. So there are really two files that you should be concerned about. One is the main activity.kotlin file. The .kt means it's a Kotlin file. In the world of Android, you can think of an activity like one screen in your application. So this file, main activity.kotlin, will be where we write the core logic for the memory game. It'll be the brain of our app. And the critical line here is set content view r.layout.activityMain. So what this is referring to is that there is a resource file called activityMain. So R stands for resource. And r.layout means look inside of the layout directory of the resources and look for a file called activityMain. So we can actually try doing that. So my preference is to select the Android view of our project. The initial perspective, which is simply called project, represents the actual file hierarchy of the project on disk. But it's a little harder to navigate. And the Android view is how I conceptually think about my project. So instead of the Android view, in the app directory, there is a folder here called res, which is short for resources. So like we talked about, there is a layout directory inside of res. Let's check that. And there's one file here called activity main.xml. And that's what is creating the link between the main activity and the underlying UI or layout. So I can go to the definition of activity main by hitting control B or command B. And that will jump to this other file, activity main. In Android, we define layouts using XML, a markup language which allows us to define the views on the screen, their position, and how they're structured with one another. So you can have views inside of another view. And you can see here how it's really simple right now. All it is is a constraint layout as the root element. And inside, there's a text view which just says, hello world. 
And that is how we are seeing the hello world text when we ran our application. Now we can start making changes. And I want to be really precise about what we're going to do in this segment, which is I just want to add a bottom component, which will describe info about the current game being played. In particular, there'll be two text views, one for the number of moves on the left and one on the right side showing how many pairs have been matched. So that means that we're going to have to be modifying the activity main.xml. And you'll notice here that there are three different perspectives of this XML file. So we have the code, which is basically the underlying XML representation, split, which is both, and then design, which is just looking at the preview rendered in Android Studio itself. So to give us give ourselves a bit more space, I'm going to double tap on activity main, and that basically minimized this project tool window. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of the default hello world. And we are now going to drag out a linear layout, which is horizontal orientation, because these are going to be right and left. The two text views at the bottom are going to be horizontally aligned. And we are going to set the layout width to be match constraint, which means that we're going to have the width be dictated by the constraints. That means now we should add some constraints. So from the left end of the screen, I want it to be 0 dp, which means I just want it to be flushed with the left end, and same thing on the right. And essentially what that did is it's making the width of this linear layout the whole screen width. We also want to constrain the bottom of this linear layout to the bottom of the screen. So add 0 down here as well. I also want to change the height of this to be wrap content which basically means I want the linear layout to only have as much height as whatever is inside of it. Inside of linear layout, we are going to contain two elements, and these are going to be card views. And the card views are actually what will contain the text views. So card views are a really nice Android component, which show some elevation. That's a material design recommended UI. So that's what we'll use to create some separation between the text views. And we'll actually also use it for each memory card. So I have a card view here. I'm going to change the corner radius to be 8 dp here. And then inside of the card view, I want to drag out a text view. So a couple changes I want to make here. First off, I want to make the width and height to be match parent. So this text view takes up the whole width and height of the parent, which is a card view. I want to make the text appearance large, make it a little bit bigger. Um, let's also give it some dummy text here. So this is this one is going to represent the number of moves that the user has done. So we'll start out with zero moves. And then I'd like to add some padding onto this text view. So let me search for this attribute called padding. And let's give give this text view a padding of 8 dp all around. So you can see how it created some space. Let me zoom in on the design preview just so we can get a closer look at the changes we're making. The last thing on this text view is I want to set the gravity of it to be center, which basically means out of all the space that we have, I want to be centered inside of the card view. So search for gravity, and then we are going to set the gravity to be center. You can see how it got centered in there. Now going back to the card view, one thing I want to add onto the card view is a margin. So we can see a separation between the card view and the background, which is the linear layout. So search for margin, and we are going to add a margin of 10 dp on all sides. So now you can start to actually see this card view take shape and have this elevation that I mentioned earlier. We actually want two different card views on the bottom in the linear layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, copy this, then go and select the linear layout, and then paste it. What we did here is we are embedding two card views in the linear layout. And in order to make them show up side by side, there's a property on the elements in the linear layout called weight. And the weight dictates how much space should the linear layout allocate for this child. So if we set the value to be equal on each of the card views, that basically means we want an equal amount of space allocated. That looks good. So now in the text view on the right, we don't want that to represent the number of moves. We want that to represent how many pairs have been found. So I'll call this pairs, and then we'll say 0 out of 4. And then you can see how one issue that we have right now is that the ID of these text views is identical. So let's go back into the code tab now and fix this. So you can see again here in the code tab, the red error highlighting. And one thing to keep in mind also is that any change that you make in the design tab, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between that and what you see in the code tab. So you can kind of see here, we have a linear layout, 
and inside that linear layout is a card view with a text view inside, and then same thing down here. So we would like to change the ID of this one to be TV num moves because it represents a text view with number of moves, and then the ID of this one should be TV num pairs. And then one more thing I want to do while we're in the code section is I would like to add a background color on the linear layout. I'm just going to add the background attribute and the value of this I would we wanted to set to attribute and there's one inbuilt called color secondary variant which is kind of this teal color and if we go in the design tab you can see what that looks like. Cool that looks pretty good. So now if we run the app we should no longer be seeing the hello world text and we should now be seeing this linear layout at the bottom with that hard-coded text that we have. Awesome. Next we're going to drag out a recycler view and this is going to be the primary component which will hold on to all the cards in our memory game and I want to set the left and right constraints of this to be 0 dp so I want to take up the whole screen width. The top constraint should be flush against the top of the screen and the bottom constraint I want this to be actually up against the top of the linear layout at the bottom. In order to have that take a visible effect we need to change the layout height to be 0 dp. And now you can see how the recycler view is basically taking up all the remaining space after we've allocated the space for the linear layout at the bottom of the screen. And also the layout width, we can also make it match constraint 0 dp because we've properly defined the, the constraint on the, on the left and right side. And this recycler view won't have any visible UI change because we haven't actually written the logic to populate it yet. That's what we'll do in the next part. The last thing I want to do to wrap up this part though is go back to the main activity and let's actually grab references to each of the views that we have on the screen now. So in particular I would like to be able to get references to any of the components that we have that we will need to change programmatically. So in particular these two text views and the recycler view. So give this an ID name of RV board because it represents our memory board. Tap on refactor. TV num moves looks good, TV num pairs looks good, and I'll just let's just go ahead and change the default name of the ID here of linear layout 2 and, and make this LL game info, which stands for linear layout game info, because this is a container with all of the information of the game. And then let's refactor and Android Studio will take care of updating anywhere else that this ID is referenced. So now in main activity, the pattern here is any widget that we have in our layout we can reference in main activity, and we'll define that as a private member variable. And all these will be private late init var. So for example, RV board, and this is going to be of type recycler view. And then similarly, we're going to have one for TV num moves. This is going to be a text view. And there's going to be one more, which is TV num pairs. And that's also a text view. And the reason it's a late init var is because we know that these variables will be set but they'll be set in the onCreate method, which is invoked by the Android system. They're not going to be created at the time of construction of the main activity. And that's why this is a late, in it, late initialization. So now in the onCreate, as soon as we've called setContentView, now we can set these newly defined variables equal to the corresponding view in the layout. And we'll do that by calling a special method findViewById and provide the ID that we assigned. So for the recycler view, we give it an ID of RV board. And similarly, TV num moves. And then finally, TV num pairs. Now we've set up the scaffolding for the main activity and we have references to the key views on the layout. The goal in the next part is to add in data to the recycler view in a four by two grid of memory cards that we'll define. If you're ready and excited for the next part, give me a like and drop a comment to let me know. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next part comes out, and I'll see you soon.